Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new basketball podcast called College Basketball Power Hour. I'm here, uh, your host, Nathan Bay, with Grant Anderson and Dylan McGraw. I'm Nathan Bay, a sophomore at the University of Wisconsin-Madison from the Chicago suburbs. Been around basketball all my life. Love to talk about it, especially college basketball. And I decided to fill up some free time during quarantine and start a podcast with these two guys who are also very knowledgeable about the sport. Grant, why don't you introduce yourself first? What's up, everyone? I'm Grant. Um, I'm also a sophomore at Wisconsin. Um, from Iowa City, Iowa. Uh, I've got my Virginia basketball, I think a beauty shirt on, John Rothstein, you know. I was thinking about wearing my We Sleep in May shirt, but it's dirty right now, so. Uh, <laughs> but super stoked for this season. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Obviously gonna be a lot of ups and downs, games canceled, like all that stuff, but it's gonna be a lot of good teams, a lot of good players. It's gonna be a really fun one, so. Yeah, definitely. Dylan? Yeah, hey guys, Dylan here. Um, like they said, sophomore as well. And um, grew up about 30 minutes from Madison. So Wisconsin basketball has always been a big part of my life. And just having college basketball right around the corner, man, you know, it's bittersweet. Uh, last year got canceled such a terrible time right before the March Madness, guys. I can remember I got the notification. I was in Quick Trip. I was like, <laughs> But hey, you know, especially for the Badgers, I was hoping we can make a run, but turn a new page and I'm excited for the 2020-2021 season. Yeah, for sure. Well, at least you got some quick trip out of it. That's what I'll say. Um, so obviously, Wisconsin, a school that we all go to, uh, we'll talk about our conference first, the Big Ten Conference, which I think is going to be a very competitive year, maybe a little bit top heavy, some good teams at the top, but all around Pretty solid conference, could be the best conference in college basketball this year. First, we're going to go with our preseason favorite to win the conference. So Grant, why don't you go first? All right, so the Big Ten, um, I agree with you, like a lot of like top heavy sort of. Um, I think there's a lot of depth in this conference, but there are like a, a tier of top teams here. Um, and there's four teams in particular. I go with Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Michigan State. Um, so you know, any one of these teams, like, obviously none of them, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if they tied or, you know, two-way, three-way tie like we had last year. Um, but for, I just kind of feel like, you know, even though most people say Michigan State is the fourth team out of those, you know, I just feel like Michigan State's going to pull through and come out on top this year. I, you know, I just, it's just... Uh, just a feeling I have, you know, honestly, I can't really say anything more than that. Like Wisconsin could win, Illinois could win, Iowa could win, yeah. but I'm, I'm going with Michigan State as my pick. Yeah, definitely. Dylan? Yeah, definitely. I uh, agree with Grant. The, my top four, Wisconsin, Michigan State, Iowa, and Illinois, but um, where I, uh, I'm going to go with Wisconsin, you know, I'm not being a hometown boy, you know, you look at them, they only lost Brevin Fritzel. They bring in Johnny Davis, uh, a guy who's going to be immediate impact. Good. I'm just super excited to watch them. Um, and yeah, I can see Michigan State being very close behind them, possibly tying with them. Tom Izzo, a top three coach in the country in my mind. And college basketball, just the coaching can take you so far. I think Izzo is a good squad this year and he definitely is going to have them ready. Yeah, I definitely agree. Mich Michigan State, Wisconsin, definitely good choices. In my heart, I really wanted to say Wisconsin, but from what I saw last year, I'm going to go with Illinois. I think they've got two studs in Io and Kofi coming back. I'm really surprised they came back, but I'm happy for them. My dad went there, so they're probably my second favorite team in the conference. And I just love the depth that they have. I think Adam Miller, their new recruit coming in, he's a stud. I love Andre Kuberlo too. Got a couple of grad transfers that are coming into the program as well to provide some depth. Demonte Williams, their glue guy, they've just got experience. And I think they're hungry. Brad Underwood's gonna get the squad ready to compete in March. And I like them to win the conference. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, 
like like any of these teams could win, you know. And I actually, I mean, we're gonna get into rankings in a little bit, but I actually have Illinois ranked the highest preseason out of all those teams. So totally agree with that. Illinois could, yeah. Yep. So now we're going to go with a team that may not be at people's minds at the top of their list to win the Big Ten, but somebody that could end up possibly competing for that top spot. Grant, who is your dark horse this year? All right. So um, there's a couple of teams I could go with, but one I'm really going to be keeping an eye on is Indiana. Um, I see Trace Jackson Davis. He's probably going to be first team all Big Ten by the end of the year. Um, and then they got, you know, a good group of core guys, Rob Finnessy, Joey Brunk, Al Durham, Race Thompson, you know, we've seen them, we know what they are, um, but they bring in three freshmen. Um, they bring in a freshman, uh, Christian Lander. I think he could be freshman of the year in the Big Ten. We watch a lot of his stuff. Uh, he's a lefty. I always love lefties. So, um, and then uh, Trey Galloway and Anthony Leal too, too, have heard good things about them. Um, Indiana could definitely put together an impressive run and uh, compete for a big time championship this year. Definitely. Dylan? Yeah, for me, I'm going to go with a team that when you say dark horse, um, you might think I'm kind of crazy because they've just had so much recent success, but I'm going to go with Michigan. You know, last year, they were kind of middle of the pack in the Big Ten, a uh, down year for them. I definitely can see them coming back. I know they lost a big piece with uh, Xavier Simpson, um, or is it Samson? Shit. Yeah. So, yeah. So they lost a big piece with him, but I think Isaiah Livers. I really like him. He is a. He can pop it. He can get you in the post. He's just all around, just a great player. And I like uh, Franz Wagner too, um, following his older brother's footsteps. So I think those two are going to carry them um, pretty far in the Big Ten. Right. Yep. I've got Ohio State. I think they're a solid squad, even though they lost the uh, Wesson Bros. That would definitely hurt. But I love EJ Liddell. I think he's a stud and will make a great leap on their team. He may even finish all Big Ten. Uh, I think they've got a great nucleus, too, along with C.J. Walker, Kyle Young, and Dwayne Washington. Solid starting lineup there. And watch out for Justice Swaying from Cal. I think I've heard great things about him uh, from their summer programs. He's going to step it up, and I see him giving a big boost along with Seth Towns, the transfer from the Ivy League. I like him a lot, too. So yep. now we're going with a team that we think may not live up to the hype they've been getting preseason. Uh, Grant, why don't we start with you? <laughs> okay. Um... So with this pick, like, it, it, uh, you know, I, I had to pick someone. So um, I'm going to say Wisconsin. Um, I know, I know, we're all students here. We all want Wisconsin to do well. But you just got to look at everything. And, like, halfway through the season last year, people were calling for Greg Gard to be fired. And the offense was really just frustrating to watch. You know, it's like bring the ball up pass it around for 20 seconds, look into the post, not there, okay, swing it back around, then they play hot potato, and then Brad Davison shoots a three. Um, and at the end of the year, those shots were going in. Uh, we were shooting like 43% from three over the last like five games or something, which is not sustainable at all. And at the, at the end of the year, eight straight wins, tied for a share of the Big Ten, um, but it wasn't, you know, a tough schedule in, at all, really. Um, and so I just think you've got to, like, they bring everyone back. Like, that's the big thing. Everyone says five senior starters. But at the same time, it's like they weren't that great last year for most of the season. So I think if, you know, this year, like, everyone's expecting a lot, but they could just kind of fall back to where they were middle of the season last year and not be that great. I, I hate the answer, but I respect the answer. <laughs> Uh, Dylan, who do you have? Uh, my hype, my no hype, or the team I believe should not deserve the hype, uh, is checking in at number 25 in the preseason rankings, Rutgers. Um, you know, it was good to see them um, have a little, or have their uh, bright spot last year, you know. Uh, Geo Baker, he is a stud. Uh, I wish he was on Wisconsin, man, but just... Uh, I don't know. I think Rutgers is going to go back to their old ways and uh, kind of be a disappointment. Yeah, I mean, 
I, I kind of like Rutgers, but we can talk about that later. Oh, I've actually got the team that you had as your dark horse as my team that I don't believe the hype in, which is Michigan. I think next, I, I'm not saying they're a bad team. I think they're a good team, but I just, they were ranked, I believe 25 in the AP poll when it first came out. And I don't think that's warranted right now. Losing their two best players from last year and I don't know how much depth they have at point guard. That's the most important position in college basketball right now. I think they're starting or projected to start Mike Smith, who is an Ivy League transfer right now. Um, I haven't heard much about him. Next year, they've obviously got the number one recruiting class coming in, which and I'm very high on them from 2021, 2022. But that's a year away. And right now, I see them maybe competing for an NCAA tournament berth. But to be top 25 in the preseason right now, I don't know. I don't see it. I see, I see Michigan definitely in the tournament, but they've they've kind of fallen a long way. At one point in the offseason, I was ready to rank them number one overall in the country. Before Isaiah Todd went to the G League, before Josh Christopher chose Arizona State, and uh, was it David DeJulius transferred? Yeah. Um, if they had those three, I was ready to put them as number one in the country. But now, you know, I see them, I see them definitely in the tournament. But, yeah, they could, they could struggle a bit without – guard play if Mike Smith isn't that great yeah I mean we'll, we'll see what happens there but the Big Ten no doubt will be definitely fun to watch uh, so moving on to our next segment uh, I love to talk about award season personally um, obviously we saw Obi Toppin win a ton of awards this year just get drafted uh, a couple nights ago uh, very happy for him good to see him come along but first we're going to talk about the preseason favorites that we have so we're going to list off three favorites first, and I'll go with Grant to answer this question. Okay. Um, so for Wooden Award, I think there's a clear favorite. It's Luca Garza. Everyone knows it. Um, but the thing is, I think that after seeing Luca dominate for two straight years, I feel like the narrative is going to flip, and everyone's going to be kind of looking for someone to knock him off, you know? Because it's like people feel like Luca won it last year, even though Obi like actually got the awards especially in the Big Ten, like you're going to tune in to like every single Big Ten game and the, the announcers are going to mention Luca, even if I was not playing, you know. So I feel like people are going to be looking for people to knock him off. So I've got Colin Gillespie from Villanova. You know, I think Villanova will be a top five team all year. Um, he's like, you know, he's their best player. Also, Jeremiah Robinson are on that team, but I won't mention him um, as like a wooden word favorite. Um, but another guy got um, Jalen Johnson at Duke, super high on Jalen Johnson. He's going to be, I mean, this upcoming NBA draft is stacked, but like in this year, Jalen Johnson would have gone like one or two, probably maybe, maybe three. Um, and then I'll throw in Sam Hauser from Virginia too. That's three favorites for the Wooden Award. Yeah, solid list. Dylan, who are your three? Well, oh, like I said, clear favorite, Luca Garza, Iowa, you know, what can you say? Average 24, nine and almost two blocks a game. Like that is phenomenal. Um, he's, he's tough to guard, you know, um, shot 54% from the field. Um, could even step out and shot close to 36% from three. Just, um, Kind of like a once in a generation big for Iowa, man. He is just special. And I also agree with Grant on my uh, number two guy, Colin Gillespie. Um, kind of a do it all guy. Uh, Villanova's guards is really something that I don't know. Jay Wright, he's got like the Jay Wright secret stuff, man. His guards are amazing. Um, Gillespie, like I said last year, uh, 15 points, almost four rebounds, and uh, four and a half assists per game. Just a do-it-all guy. Um, and my third um, is a freshman like Grant, but I went the route of Cade Cunningham. A lot of hype around him. Um, uh, he's just uh, it's looking like he'll be a top five draft pick next year for sure. Um, in high school at a stacked Montverde Academy, averaged 14 points and six assists along with four rebounds. Just another do-it-all guy. So those are my three favorites going into the season. Yeah, I, I definitely look forward to watching Cade play. Uh, definitely a top pick in next year's draft as well as Jalen Johnson. 
Um, my first pick, obviously, you can't leave out Luca Garza. Uh, in my opinion, was the best player in college basketball last year. Obi just got more hype because he was flashier, in my opinion. Um, that's probably the reason why he won the Wooden Award. So I'd go with Luca, um, just a dominant piece. I watched him play a lot of games last year. No one could guard him. It's as simple as that. What, what are you going to do? He can shoot. He can uh, score in the post. Great finisher. He can pass, too. It's, it's just tough. When you have a piece like that, it's, it's tough to win against that offense in Iowa. Uh, my second pick, another Big Ten guy that I talked about earlier, Io Desunmu. I love him this year. Um, took great strides last year, and I think he gets even better this year. He's got the motivation. Um, his, his symbol is kind of why not me. I've been following him for a while because he's a Chicago guy. Why not him to win the Wooden Award? Um, I think he's going to be the best player on, in my opinion, the best team in the Big Ten. And he's going to make waves nationally uh, in order to improve his draft stock and take Illinois to a place where they haven't been in a while. My third favorite uh, coming in from my number one preseason ranked team, Gonzaga, is Corey Kispert. I think he's going to step it up a lot this year. I uh, love the way he played last year. And I think he'll really step into the spotlight without Petrusev there signing uh, in the pros in Europe. So I think he steps into the spotlight, uh, goes in. Uh, he'll be Gonzaga's leading scorer this year, in my opinion, and lead him to a hopeful one seed in the NCAA tournament. So now uh, that we've all listed out our three favorites, we're going to go with Kispert teams. over Jalen Sutton. Third delay there. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. All right. So now we're going to go with some dark horses. Grant, who do you have? Um, I've got Remy Martin, which he's not really, you know, a dark horse in the sense, like, I think he's preseason Pac-12 player of the year. Um, but like people don't really watch Pac-12 basketball, you know, like I do, I stay up late, Pac-12 after dark, you know, UCLA, love watching them. Um, <laughs> Arizona State's going to be a fun team this year, but, uh, Remy Martin can, can fill up the stat sheet and shoot the lights out. I think if Arizona State really does well this year, he could be in the conversation. Definitely. Dylan? Yeah, so for my dark horse, I uh, went pretty far down the line. Um, out of Houston, my guy Quentin Grimes uh, transferred from Kansas last year. Um, you know, he – I know it's – this pick is like, oh, what are you doing? But – Quentin Grimes, you know, I think he has the potential this year to really step it up in Houston's offense. You know, they lost some key guys. Yeah, average 12, three, and almost three last year. So definitely is a guy to keep an eye on in the American Conference. Um, definitely, if not with the Wooden Award, I could see him being first team all AACP. Yeah, I agree. For my dark horse, I like a team that I think is going to have a big comeback year from their pretty disappointing year last year by their standards. I'm going to go with Garrison Brooks out of North Carolina. I think he's going to step it up a lot this year. Could be the best returning big man in the ACC right now. Played some pretty dominant basketball last year, really took the lead while Cole Anthony was dealing with some injuries. And I like him to get noticed a lot more now that he's got a good team around him with Caleb Love coming in and another good recruiting class for Roy Williams and company. Um, so I like him to make strides and hopefully they can compete in a tough ACC this year. So I know that we have Grant who watches a lot of mid-major basketball here. Grant, do you have any mid-majors to keep an eye on? For the yes, I've got the mid-majors. Um, so three players to keep an eye on. First one, I got a shout out AJ Green. Um, dude is a killer uh, at Northern Iowa, by the way. Um, I saw this guy play in high school a lot and he has been that dude since he was a freshman in high school. Now he's going to his junior year, should average around 20 points. Northern Iowa is a really fun team this year. Um, so yeah, keep your eye on AJ Green. Um, then we got Colby Ross at Pepperdine, another guy who just scores a ton. Um, Pepperdine, same conference as Gonzaga, so probably get a couple good games in there. Um, and then a third guy, Jalen Crutcher um, from Dayton. He was overshadowed by Obi, as everyone was overshadowed by Obi last year. But uh, Jalen Crutcher's a very, very good point guard. Um, now it's his team, you know. So. Uh, when you when you tune in to watch Dayton this year, Jalen Crutcher, I believe he's number ten, so he's gonna be very good. Yeah, I like I like Dayton a lot this year. Um, 
could be some guys there. Definitely. I, I like the Atlantic 10. I like the way they play basketball. Definitely a tough, hard nosed conference. Richmond will be solid this year too. They'll be a fun team to watch. Yeah. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see how the A-10 plays out for sure. So now we're going to move on to some team spotlights uh, that we have. Just these are some teams that we probably have all ranked in our top 25, but could really be anywhere on our list, anywhere from the top 10 to um, bottom 10. So we'll see how this plays out. First, we're going to go talk about Kentucky, who seems to have a lot of roster turnover every year with big recruiting classes with Calipari and company. So Grant, what do you think of Kentucky this year? Yeah, so Kentucky this year, um, pretty typical Kentucky team. You know, they've got a couple elite recruits and then a couple really solid recruits. Um, not many guys coming back, like returning from last year. Um, they got a transfer um, from Wake Forest, Olivier Saar. Uh, he got his waiver, so he's going to be their starting center. Um, and then BJ Boston's really the guy that everyone's very high on. I like him a lot. Um, he's going to probably be like a top 10 pick in the draft. Um, Terrence Clark also up there. Um, yeah, this Kentucky team, I think, should I, should I say my ranking for them? Um, I've got them at preseason 14. So uh, I think, you know, early in the season, they're going to they're gonna have a lot to figure out. You know, they're bringing, like, Keon Brooks is really the only guy, I think, who played last year. So it's a totally new team. They're, they're going to have to figure out um, pretty much, you know, they're going to have to figure it out as they go. So early season might not be that great, but by the end of the year, they've got a lot of talent. I think this, this would be a really good Kentucky team. Yeah, definitely. Dylan? Yeah, just going off what Grant said, I totally agree with them. Um, I think this point guard they got coming in, Devin Askew, out of modern day, this, um, I really loved watching his highlights in high school. Um, dude is a straight killer. You know, I, I believe he reclassified. So. He should be a senior in high school, but don't quote me on that. But so just, I think he'll have the lead point guard role. I'm interested to see uh, Jacob Toppin. Um, is he allowed to play immediately? Yeah, he got a brother. Yep. He can play it. So relation to Obi Toppin as well, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. younger yep. brother. Hopefully uh, he can um, have some magic, steal some of his magic, his brother's magic, excuse me, from last season. And, uh, that could be an exciting player if he gets some minutes. Yeah, definitely. I like Kentucky squad a lot this year. Uh, definitely love Delvin Askew. I feel like um, Kentucky always kind of has a guard that goes high in the drafts and ends up being a pretty solid player in college and in the NBA. Like we saw SGA, and then I think this year we're going to see Tyrese Maxey shine on that 76ers team. So I like ask you to be a uh, first round pick next year, maybe even late lottery. We'll see how he plays. Uh, definitely like BJ Boston a lot. Olivier Sauer, obviously a great player at Wake Forest. I think he'll, I agree with Grant, he'll slide in there starting big man role. I have them ranked as number 10 right now. Um, I saw so a fringe top 10 team. I really do think they could push to be a Final Four, though, if Keon Brooks can become a leader that I think he can be. Um, I was a little sad that he ended up choosing Kentucky over Indiana last year. I wanted him to stay in the Big Ten because I thought he'd be a good addition for their team, and i like to see Indiana play well. But he ended up choosing Kentucky. Um, I was kind of surprised that he decided to stay back because I know Calipari usually likes to push his players into the pros when they are ready or kind of as young as possible just so they can kind of develop there. Um, but yeah, we'll see how he plays. He's got to take some big steps this year in order for them to be a final four contender, which I think they're definitely capable of. All right, well, moving on to our next team on the list who also has a lot of roster turnover this year, Texas Tech. Grant, what do you think of the Raiders? All right, I really like this Texas Tech team. Um, I like every team that Chris Beard has, you know, just, just like the tenacity that they play with. They love defense. Um, they really get after it. Um, and this year, I mean, the guys on this team, Mac McClung, Kyler Edwards, Micah Peavy, Terrence Shannon, Marco Santos Silla, that starting lineup right there is going to be so fun. Um, they bring in five-star Namari Burnett, um, transferred from Wichita State, Jamarius Burton. Um, Avery Benson's that, that walk-on with the long hair that everyone loves. <laughs> it, 
th this is just like a really fun team. Um, lots of talent. Again, like lots of roster turnover. Um, but I have them ranked preseason number 10 or 12, 12. I have them at 12. So slightly ahead of, ahead of Kentucky. Um, just going to be, I mean, Mac McClung, it's going to be a lot of fun to see him because in the Big 12, especially because, you know, playing in the Big East for Georgetown, Georgetown was kind of like a bottom tier team. Not everyone really tuned in to watch him, but he's, he's going to be a lot of fun to watch in uh, big matchups in the Big 12 this year. So Texas Tech probably, uh, I don't know. Um, they should challenge for a, a Big 12 championship, but definitely a team to watch for in March. Yep. Dylan? Yeah, with Texas Tech, um, you know, if, if you could buy stock in college basketball, I'd definitely go all in with Texas Tech, man. I love them. Um, although losing Davide Moretti and Jemias Ramsey, that's going to be tough to overcome. You know, that's almost 30 points per game between the two of them right there. Um, but I think uh, adding in the transfers, McClung and Santos Silva really bolstered their lineup. Um, like Grant said, I mentioned earlier too, coaching. That's a big thing for me. And Chris Beard, he is working his way into one of the like top tier names in college basketball. You know, Stephen F. Austin, he was a winner. Texas Tech, he's making it a winner. And I just love his style of play, man. Um, I think in that trio of Kyler Edwards, Mac McClung, and Terrence Shannon, they're going to be fun to watch. Um, they're yeah. just going to be the guard play is just going to be awesome with Texas Tech. So that's my thoughts on them. Yep. I've got Texas Tech right now at 13 in my rankings, so a little bit behind Kentucky, but I like them a lot. Obviously, a lot of moving pieces last year, losing um, Reddy, and I believe they lost three or four starters uh, out of their lineup from last year with Jemias Ramsey and a couple other players. Um, but obviously, i uh, mention another Chicago guy, Taron Shannon. I love him. I think his draft stock is going to go up so much this year. Um, high flyer, crazy athletic player. And I think he's going to extend his shooting range and kind of extend his playmaking too and become kind of the focal point of that team along with Mac McClung. Like them a lot. Chris Beard, obviously a great coach offensively and defensively, great guard play. So I like them to compete in the uh, Big 12, which is looking kind of open this year because I don't know about you guys, but I think Kansas might be a little weaker than usual. Uh, yeah. losing a couple of big pieces. So the Big 12 is kind of open. So it wouldn't surprise me to see Texas Tech on top come in March. So the last team that we're going to talk about in our team spotlights is a team that is going to be pretty fun to watch this year, Arizona State. Grant, what do you think? Yeah, I'm tuning in to pretty much every Arizona State game. I mean, um, this backcourt of Remy Martin, Josh Christopher, Holland Woods, Alonzo Verge, that's like as good as it gets in college basketball. Um, now, I will say their front court, there are a lot of question marks there. Um, Romello White transferred to Ole Miss this offseason. Um, lots of Arizona State fans like Jalen Graham, but, you know, I'm not really so sure about that. And then the other guys also, um, a lot of unknowns. So this Arizona State team, very guard heavy, um, but should just be a ton of fun to watch. And, uh, yeah, Pac-12 basketball, it's back. <laughs> Yep, Dylan. Yeah, man. Um, looks like Arizona State's kind of the guard you for this year. Um, Remy Martin and Verge are going to be a dynamic duo. Josh Christopher, uh, I love him. I think he's the second best freshman coming in behind Cunningham. He just, in high school, he was just a monster going up against uh, private schools, and he was just dominating with his uh, lowly at Mayfair. Uh, high school and I really like Jalen House off the bench uh, Eddie House's son he played in high school uh, he was just played for that shadow mountain team that was just crazy defense um, so I look to him he'll be a spark off the bench for sure and then Marcus Bagley uh, this this big man um, I, I, there's a lot uh, a lot of rave about him um, you know if there's anything like his older brother definitely um, is going to be a great thing for Bobby Hurley, who, again, another great coach, uh, was amazing at Buffalo, was doing the same stuff at Arizona State. I love Bobby Hurley. He was around a winning program in college with Coach K, and he's starting to translate that at, in Tempe. So 
I'm really high on Arizona State this year. Yeah, uh, I have Arizona State at 16 right now. Um, they, uh, good thing I get to talk about another Chicago guy, Alonzo Verge from Thornton High School. Um, started off kind of on the wrong path. I believe he went to JUCO for a year before he transferred to Arizona State, either JUCO or community college, but he's really finding a stride there and I'm happy for him. I think they're the best backcourt in the Pac-12 for sure, maybe even the country with Remy Martin, he, who's so fun to watch. Takes some bad shots sometimes, but he was really one of their main scorers, if their only scorer last year on that Arizona State team. But um, finally gets the help he needs in Josh Christopher to, I think, bring them over the hump and compete for a Pac-12 title with a, also, this is kind of a pattern as well, a team that is usually a favorite, Oregon, kind of a weaker roster this year. So we'll see how they compete in the Pac-12. But the biggest thing for Arizona State is can they get stops? I know they can score on offense. I know they've got a lot of firepower there. But can Bobby Hurley discipline them enough to stick down and get their stops on defense that they need to win games? That's going to be the thing that kind of separates them between being a good team and a great team next year. So now for our last segment of the night, uh, obviously the opening week in college basketball is very exciting. Lots of preseason tournaments, uh, big litmus tests for a lot of teams to see where they're at competitively because really we can speculate all we want, but none of us really know how teams are going to play until they actually get on the court and go out and play those games. So Grant, what are some impact matchups next week that you see as being fun to watch? All right, so I don't want to take all the good ones. So I'll go with, um, let's see. Uh, I'll start off um, the first one. The first game I think everyone's going to be watching. Baylor, Arizona State, Wednesday, 8 o'clock, ESPN. Um, it's a, what are we calling this, an MTE? It's not really a preseason tournament because um, it, it's a Mohegan Sun. It's not like this is the battle for Atlantis or anything. Um, it's just... Baylor, Arizona State, Villanova, Boston College getting together, playing some games. So Wednesday, those two teams play. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> the backcourt matchup in that is just insane. Um, I'll say, let's see, I believe this one's on Sunday. Um, Richmond plays Kentucky. That's going to be a lot of fun. Like we, we covered Kentucky, and then Nathan, you mentioned Richmond's going to be maybe the best mid-major team in the country this year. So – um, always great to see that uh, kind of match up. And then um, hmm, Houston and Texas Tech, Sunday at 4 o'clock. Uh, Houston has ranked, I believe I ranked them like 17. I don't know. No, I have them at 23. I think they're AP 17 to start the year. Um, and then Texas Tech, of course, we just talked about them. Um, great battle of Texas teams here. Um, Going to be a lot of fun to watch that. Yeah, definitely. Dylan, uh, what are you looking forward to seeing this week? Uh, yeah, so for me, I'm really interested in this uh, UCLA-San Diego State game. Um, UCLA coming in ranked at 22nd in the nation. Um, I'm really excited to see how they are this year. Um, and San Diego State, you know, last year they had that amazing season, only a few losses. You know, you could say they're playing good competition, but they definitely uh, were a solid team. So I'm definitely I'm really excited for that matchup. And then a smaller matchup I'm looking at is Memphis St. Mary's. Um, Memphis, uh, in other ways, um, has this team looking uh, phenomenal. He's just been his recruiting has been sensational, and just uh, can't say enough good things about Memphis. Good to see them back in or somewhat back and then St. Mary's uh, they don't get much love out west I know Gonzaga kind of hogs all the spotlight but you're in and you're out seems like St. Mary's is the same team and they just like do not have down you it's crazy so I'm excited to see how they are this year for sure yep definitely a uh, couple matchups that I'm looking forward to this week. First one on opening day is West Virginia, Texas A&M. Uh, two matchups between a couple Power Five schools. Both had disappointing years last year. Um, I like West Virginia to step it up. Uh, I like Oscar Shibue. I think he's going to step it up. And Culver's still there, right? Their other yeah. big man? Yeah. So I, I had them ranked. I believe I had them either 18th or 19th in my preseason top 25. I had them 18th. 
Uh, so I like them to step it up a lot this year. Um, hopefully we can see Jordan McCabe play a little better as well. Because mm-hmm. um, he's been a little bit of a disappointment uh, coming from you Wisconsin guys out there who have yeah. told me about all the hype. Yeah. And he looked he looked <laughs> raw in high school. He looked raw. Uh, his mixtapes were crazy. So hopefully he can start to live up to that hype a little bit. Um, that, so that's a matchup that I like a lot on Wednesday. My matchup of the week personally is on Thursday, Gonzaga, Kansas, um, two top 10 teams that I have ranked. Uh, definitely going to be a big test for both teams. I love Gonzaga this year, even without Philip Petrusev. They're my number one preseason rank right now. Just love uh, all their depth that they have, all their experience they got from last year with who I talked about earlier, Kispert, who's in my Wooden Award watch list, um, Joel Ayayi, uh, Jalen Suggs coming in, great point guard from Minnesota. Love how he plays. Uh, so that should be a definitely competitive game this week. Uh, my last matchup on Friday, I like Virginia, Florida. Two kind of defensive minded teams with Tony Bennett and Mike White at the helm there. Uh, Virginia, obviously a consensus top 10 team this year. I know Grant loves them. Uh, they're, they're definitely a solid roster right now. And I look for, I look for Florida to put up a fight. Uh, they're kind of an underrated team out there. I like them to hopefully compete in the SEC. Uh, Mike White will get them right. They have a decent amount of players returning. So I like the way they're looking this year, and that should be a fun matchup on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, can, I, can I just ask you, like, two things right, real quick? Yep. Um, where do you have Kansas ranked? You said top 10. Um, I have Kansas currently at – Number eight. Okay. I'm super low on Kansas this year. I have them at 19. Wow. Okay. Because um, I just, I just don't see where all the hype is coming from. Like I get that they're Kansas, but like Mitch Lightfoot and um, who's the other one? Who's the other? It's a, uh, here, I can look it up real quick. Like the, the bigs that we're accustomed to at Kansas, they're just not here this year. Uh, David McCormick, that's who it is. David McCormick and Mitch Lightfoot just don't really do it for me. I think, or is it, is it Mitch Lightfoot? Yeah, I think he's still there. I think he registered it last year. Um, and so, you know, Marcus Garrett and Ochai Agbaji, I like them. And then Bryce Thompson, five-star point guard, probably be pretty good. But I, I don't know about Kansas this year. Um, but yeah, really interested to see what they do. Um, and then I am, look, I love Virginia, but I do have us, I'm, I am a little low on Virginia this year. Um, I have us at 11 preseason. I know we're number four AP, but um, yeah, I hope we're number four, you know. <laughs> I'll be watching every game, but I, I, do, I do see them at a little bit lower. Yeah, I've, I've got Virginia at seven personally, um, so a little lower than the AP has them, but I still like them a lot this year. I like their experience that they have. Um, I think Kihei Clark's a great leader for their team. Love how he plays. Um, I hate the Housers, but I think they're going to put on a show this year in college basketball <laughs> once they're kind of out of the Marcus Howard zone where he takes all the shots a game and they don't really get much credit. I think they were kind of dogged at Marquette. So I like that they're both kind of went into their own spotlight. I wish they were both at Wisconsin because we would have an unbelievable roster this year. My, yeah. Probably my preseason number one if they were here. But um, I like Virginia a lot. And I think Florida is going to step it up a lot this year. Uh, just like the way Mike White has them. And I have him currently as my number 23 in my power rankings. I know they're off of the AP poll. I think they were, were receiving a couple votes, but they're always a tough team. I like them a lot. I'm going to follow them for sure. Yep. All right. So that is all we have for our first podcast of College Basketball Power Hour. Uh, any closing thoughts, Grant, Dylan, either of you guys, anything you want to see this week or looking at? Um, watch out for Texas. I'll say that. The Big 12 is going to be a lot of fun. Baylor, Texas, Texas Tech, West Virginia, Kansas. It's going to be a lot. And Oklahoma State, too. Watch out for, yeah, watch the Big 12. <laughs> yep. I'll say shout out to Florida State and shout out to the Chicago Bulls for trusting in Patrick Williams. I like <laughs> him more than a lot of Chicago fans do. Go watch his mixtape on YouTube from his pre-draft workouts, working out with Trey Young and Spencer Dinwiddie. Chicago fans, I think you'll change your mind a little bit on the way you have him seen. AK knows what he's doing. But enough about the NBA. Florida State, Leonard Hamilton. I like him a lot this year. Um, 
bringing in some new recruits. Instead of kind of, they never really rebuild, they just reload. And I like them a lot this year to compete in the ACC. So uh, that's all we have for tonight. Hopefully we'll see you guys again next week for College Basketball Power Hour.